The national debate continues to rage over gun control and what laws should be in place. KMIR 6's Angela Monroe spoke with all the top cops in the region and joins us now with this special report. Angela. Many lawmakers are setting their sights on stricter gun control across the nation. Law enforcement will enforce any new laws that are passed. I asked the Riverside County Sheriff and all our local police chiefs what trends they're seeing in gun violence and their thoughts on gun control. Guns are the target of intense scrutiny now after multiple devastating massacres across our nation. As the gun control debate heats up, let's take a look at how firearm violence is impacting our area. Sheriff Stan Sniff is in charge of the second largest sheriff's department in California, Riverside County. These days, uh, we are seeing across California, not just across Riverside County. And it varies from region to region, even within the county. But we're seeing an overall increase in crime, particularly violent crime in many areas. We also sat down with all the police chiefs in the Coachella Valley. Here's the trends for our local cities. In Indio, I would say that we're steady. Uh, our calls for service overall for uh, 2012 uh, decreased by 5,000. In Cathedral City, actually as far as uh, crimes involving the use of uh, guns has been uh, tracking about uh, consistent. As far as the city of Palm Springs, we haven't seen an increase in gun violence. It's pretty much, uh, uh, you know, like the situation in Cathedral City is pretty much stable. The Desert Hot Springs has been very fortunate uh, that we have actually had a slight decrease in the use of firearms uh, in the commission of crimes. Sheriff Sniff spoke out against Senator Dianne Feinstein's proposed gun legislation. But it's a complete misnomer that those classic guns are, are used as military weapons on the civilian streets because they're not military weapons, they're look-alike weapons. Here's a look at 2011 data from the California Attorney General. 84% of firearms used in a crime were handguns. 4.2% were assault weapons. And this graph looks at California assault weapons used on crime. It has continued at a relatively low level. This state bans anything over 10 rounds, whether it's in a rifle or in a pistol. So the other states don't have those rules, and that may be something that they legitimately look at. But we're in pretty good shape here in California. California does have some of the toughest gun laws on the books, with waiting periods and background checks wherever you buy a gun. There is a disturbing trend these police chiefs are seeing with how criminals get guns. More often than not, the firearms that we collect um, or seize are stolen. Police say people need to lock up those weapons so they're not stolen in burglaries. Another upsetting trend is who officers are finding with guns. Many of the guns that we have uh, taken off um, uh, people have actually been on juveniles. So do these top cops think we need more laws? Who are we really going after with additional gun legislation? Uh, we need to go after those that should not have them, that have already been identified that they shouldn't have them. Do we agree that, uh, you know, some weapons shouldn't be out there? Absolutely. But ultimately what we do is uh, the policymakers make the laws and, and we enforce them. Having said that, give us the resources that we need to enforce those laws. Uh, some of the recommendations that were made to both the Senator's office and Congressman Ruiz's office is, uh, it, rather than reinvent the wheel, look at a good model that's already in place, and then support that model up uh, through federal funding. Though the Firearms Division of the California Attorney General's Office has a database of thousands of people in California who should not own weapons, finding the funding to check them all is a struggle. Much of the deterrent effect in the state of California has been lost. We're now seeing crime rates start to surge due to a variety of issues, some of which are directly driven by AB 109 realignment. The sheriff says the realignment that pushed more criminals and overflowing jails from prisons puts a strain on resources. There needs to be more money for the criminal justice system. And by that, I don't mean just law enforcement. Certainly we need more. We need more jail capacity. We need more state prison capacity. But clearly we even need more, more funds for the courts. There are some positive signs in the fight against gun violence in the Coachella Valley. In Desert Hot Springs. So in the last year, we've taken more guns off the street than we had in any previous years. And it, and it is because California offers some pretty good laws for us to enforce. In Indio. We have uh, a very robust uh, school resource officer program in the city uh, that began this year. Uh, every high school campus has an assigned school resource officer. The police chiefs say combating gun violence takes multiple methods. I think we have to go back to education. I think we need to be talking to our kids in school about responsible citizenship. We need to be um, 
uh, holding uh, gun owners maybe even responsible for a lack of proper securing of their weapons. And once again, money's what's needed, the chiefs say, to enforce California's gun laws. Bring us the federal funds and let's work on it together. The federal government, uh, you know, the feds, the state, and, and, and the locals working together. All of these top cops work together, finding ways to keep you safe and fight gun violence in our community. And the four city police chiefs told me they get together regularly and talk about different issues and also how to work together to fight crime. Back to you, Elizabeth.